Good evening and welcome to Deep Springs Baptist Church. I'm glad you're with us today. Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1. Uh, I want to talk about today, I got kind of the Jekyll and Hyde, and it's, but it's just a refresher, but it's also a encourager and a challenger. We're going to look at the story of Zechariah today. And, uh, but before we do that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Good evening, God. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for guiding us. Thank you for correction. And thank you for the pats on the back. Father, as we enter into the Christmas season, let us, let us be reminded that we are here to experience the Christ child. You coming to earth, you sending your Son, you providing a way of salvation for us. And as we anticipate the coming of the Christ, let us be prepared so that when the Christ child does come, that we can go out and enter the mission field that you have called us to go to. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. And by the way, that mission field that we're called to is one of telling others about Him. Now we can do that a lot of different ways. We can do it by driving a van. We can do it by taking food. We can do it by visiting. We can do it by picking up the phone. We can do it by providing for others in need. There's all kinds of ways that we could be the church. That's one thing you all taught me as a pastor. We got to be the church. You got to be the church, and you can be the church wherever you are. So this Christmas season, let's be the only Christmas that some people will ever see, and let's point them in the direction of salvation. The story of Zechariah, my first part here is, don't be a Zechariah. You say, well, Zechariah was a well-respected priest. Yes, he was. Zechariah was like on top of things. He was the best. He was the preacher. He was the priest. He was the one they came to and they and they did their and they lit their, they bring their tidings in and he would lit an incense and the incense would fill the temple and 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 so Zechariah had a very good purpose. But here we don't need to be a Zechariah. The first Zechariah, the angel Gabriel shows up. First of all, we know that Mary or Elizabeth, excuse me, his wife is very old in age. Zechariah is very old in age. God had promised Zechariah a child. God had promised Zechariah that he would be something special. Zechariah had already reached the old age. What happens when couples get old? They don't have children. So Zechariah's like, how can this be? My wife's old. You've already let me down. You've already proven yourself not true. No, he hadn't. God didn't say when he was going to give him a child. God just said he was going to give him a child. So Elizabeth is old. The angel Gabriel appears to her in chapter, appears to him, excuse me, in chapter 1. Verse number 9. The angel appeared, and you know the dialogue there. You can read it. It's a good passage to read, starting in Luke, starting in verse number 1. It, it just goes on and talking about the whole chapter, talking about Zechariah. And we get a little bit of Mary in there, and we get a lot of other things, but it's, it's, it's a good passage to read. It's a great story to get to know. So the angel appeared, and there's a dialogue back and forth between Gabe, the angel Gabriel and Zechariah. The angel tells him, you're going to be a father. He says, but my wife's old. 
Gabriel says, I'm just the messenger of the Lord. The Lord sent me to tell you this will happen. Then we get to verse 16, and he tells him something very profound. He says, and many of the children of Israel will turn to their God. We know, speed forward a little bit, this is John the Baptist. But I say, don't be a Zechariah. Because when God speaks, it's going to happen. It's going to come true. When God tells you something, it will happen. Here's where we get in trouble a lot of times. It's God's will, but it's also God's timing. God's timing here. This is a perfect picture example of God's timing. Sometimes God gives us something and He just wants to set on it. He's not setting on it for us to be idle. He's not setting on it for us to be on our blessed assurance. He's not setting on it because He does it because He wants us to be in, in limbo or lukewarm, if you will. He's setting on it for His timing. God is just having us sit right here. Hang on. But do you notice one thing that Zechariah did do? He didn't quit being Zechariah. He hadn't got to be the, the father yet, the earthly father. So many times we do that. This is one thing you can be a Zechariah on. While he was waiting for God to give him the promised child, a promised child, not the promised child, excuse me, a promised child, which we know to be John the Baptist, while he was waiting, he didn't quit being the priest. So many times many of us sit in these pews. So many times many of us sit at home and we're like, God told me to do something. He just ain't told me to do it yet, so I'm going to sit right here and wait on him. You see, that's not what Zechariah did. Zechariah could have easily gone to his throne and said, I'm not moving until God gives me the child He promised so that I can be the effective and I can fulfill the Scriptures and that my, I can fulfill my personal family desires. Don't be that Zechariah. Don't be the Zechariah when God speaks that you choose not to listen. If God tells you He's going to do something, He'll do it. I've quit asking the question, and I'm not going to ask it anymore. Remember, I used to ask you all the time, somebody give me a testimony of the time God let them down, of the time God said something, and it didn't come true. It didn't come to fruition. You see, Zechariah's unbelief, it caused him to be shut with the mouth. The Bible says in verse number 20, it says, Behold, thou shalt be dumb, and not be able to speak, until the day that these things shall be performed, because you have not believed thy words, which was fulfilled for their season. Zechariah was a man who used his mouth to proclaim the good. And the angel Gabriel says, you're done. God says you're going to, the, He uses the word dumb, which we know is speechless. He is not able to talk. So here, the man that talks all over the kingdom, the priest, goes to where he cannot talk. Verse 24 and it came to those paths that his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself for five months. Verse 25 saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked upon me, and he took away my reproach among men. She became with child. And then you get verse 26. And then the, angel, uh, then the angel Gabriel was sent by God to the city of Nazareth, to a virgin who was 
who, who's, who was with a man named Joseph from the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. You see, God had a plan all along, and Zechariah missed it up. Or excuse me, back up. Zechariah almost missed it up. Zechariah tried to miss it up. Zechariah challenged God, and all Zechariah got was a shut mouth for a period of about six to nine months. He became silent. Zechariah missed out. This Christmas season, don't be a Zechariah. Don't be a Zechariah this Christmas season season. You know the story goes on there between <coughs> excuse me. You know the story goes on there in Luke chapter 1 and I want to encourage you to read it for yourself. There's the dialogue between Mary and the dialogue between uh, Mary and Elizabeth and, and that carries on and then and then we get to verse 57 and then now Elizabeth's full time came and that she that she should be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son. Elizabeth was now the proud mother of John the Baptist. There's a cute little story that goes on to here to say, because he was a firstborn child, they should have named him Zachariah. But they didn't name him Zachariah. And his mother answered and said, Not so. He shall be called John. I guess Elizabeth used her veto power here. Elizabeth used her power as a mother and didn't call him Zechariah. Maybe that was the punishment that Zechariah got. He didn't get the reward of being called his first son named after him. Or maybe God didn't want him to be named after Zechariah. We don't know, but remember, we're not going to be a Zechariah. So let's let that detail just take care of itself. But it is an interesting detail nonetheless. And then we get to the day of circumcision, and, and, and then he said his name shall be called John. And then in verse number 64, his mouth was opened immediately, and his tongue loosed, and he spake, and praised God. Knowing the story of Zechariah and knowing what we know about Zechariah and not being able to speak for about nine months or maybe even a little bit longer, not being able to speak, I would say once he had a chance to speak, he spoke and the Bible says that he spoke and he praised God. And fear came and dwelt around them in those days, and they were noised abroad throughout all the hillside of Judea. He spoke so loud and so boldly that the news spread. This Christmas, now, the first part of my message was don't be a Zechariah. This part of the message is be a Zechariah. When you see the work of God, Praise His holy name. Zacharias saw the work of God unfold before his eyes. And what did he do? Did he open his mouth and he said, Oh, Elizabeth, I finally get to speak. When he started to talk, did he say, Goo goo ga ga to his baby? No, that's what us earthly dads do. Be a Zachariah. When you see the work of God, praise the Lord. When you see the hand of God moving, just holler out, praise the Lord. When you see the work of the Lord, praise His holy name. Be a Zechariah this Christmas. And then we get into verse 67. And his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who hath visited and redeemed his people. The 
we're all in kind of a hard place right now. 2020 is, I, I'm not going to say it's a wasted year because there's been a lot of good things this year come out of 2020. There's been a few good things come out of the COVID pandemic. There's been a whole lot of bad. There's been a whole lot of, 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 of people aging. There's been a whole lot of all kinds of stuff. But there has been some good things come out of the COVID. And there's been some good things come out of 2020. Some people say, I want to hurry and get to 2021. No, I don't want to wish my life away. I want to stay right here because my God is doing something. God is working in the hearts of the people. And I want to be the first, when I see that, to praise His holy name. He says, let me read it again in verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for He hath visited and hath redeemed his people. As we light the Advent candles this year, as we look forward to Christmas morning, when we get to look to that manger and there lays sweet baby Jesus, let us be reminded that that will be that will be the day that we say, oh, praise His holy name. That'll be the day that we get to say, the Savior is here. That'll be the day that we get to run around the streets, run around our factories, run around our homes, run around our shopping centers. That'll be the day that we get to say, God sent Jesus. To redeem his people. God sent Jesus to be our Savior. God sent Jesus to be our way. God sent Jesus to be the way, the truth, and the life. Let's not be the bad Zachariah. Good things are happening. Good things are going to happen. Let me back up. God things are going to happen. And God things... Are going, God things are happening, God things are going to happen. When those God things happen, let's praise the Lord. Let's be the good Zechariah. And let's tell the world this Christmas season that God loved them so much that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever shall believe in Him should not perish. You guessed it but have everlasting life. This Christmas season, let's get ready to praise God and let's get ready to tell a lost and dying world about a man named Jesus. I haven't done this in a couple of weeks. We're about to close the, 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 the broadcast down and I want you to continue. I want you to comment. Me, we'll see it. That'll be one of four people uh, maybe that will be able to see it and, and we'll be able to respond back. And I want you to comment your prayer request, your desires this Christmas season. What prayer request is burdening you? Comment it down below and we can pray for you. And we can reach out and we can help you and we can help you seek God's face. This Christmas season, what's burdening you? Because come December 25th, when we look down in that manger, let us be ready to praise God and tell the world about Him sending Jesus to be our Savior. Stay well, serve on, and I'll see you Sunday. Let me pray. Most loving, gracious God, I thank you for the opportunity to stand before you and talk about a mighty good man. A mighty good man that had some weak moments, but a mighty good man that you never turned away from.
Oh yeah, you had to you had to correct it a little bit like you do us all from time to time. So Father, I'm thankful for that correction. But I'm thankful for that loving hand that you keep on us. And that you kept on Zechariah and that you've kept on me and that you've kept on the rest of the people that remain faithful to you. As we welcome your child this Christmas season, let us praise and tell the good news of Jesus Christ. Be with us, keep us safe, and bring us back together. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.